when he took over at the helm of Channel 4 from Jeremy Isaacs. Many feared that Michael Grade would steer the channel down market on an unwelcome course. At the BBC, he had significantly improved ratings by creating an early evening schedule heavily relied on stars and soaps. At Channel 4, Michael Gray was anchored to the remit, bound by Parliament to show programmes which would cater for tastes not provided for by ITV. With his crew of commissioning editors and flotilla of independent production companies, he set sail. And there has been plenty to treasure. The continuing success of Film on Four, Father Ted, The Dying Rooms, Wise Up, Chris and Gabby on The Big Breakfast, Drop the Dead Donkey, Football Italia, dramas like Alan Bleasdale's GBH, Dennis Potter's Karaoke, and Dennis Potter's Final Interview, Glyndebourne, and seasons like Bloody Bosnia and Gimme Shelter. But Channel 4 also sailed dangerously close to the wind with some of its programmes. Viewers appeared on Right to Reply to complain about, amongst others, editions of Brookside, The Word and The Girly Show. The Independent Television Commission also received complaints about these programmes, which it upheld. Brass Eye, a series which I loved and appeared on Right to Reply to Say So, was also censured by the regulator. Some of the channel's seasons of programmes like The Red Light Zone and Dyke TV met with a broadside from the press and earned Michael Gray the title of Pornographer-in-Chief from the Daily Mail's Paul Johnson. Whether because of or in spite of these programmes, Michael Gray made an impact on Channel 4's audience share, lifting it to a record 11% in 1993 when it overtook BBC Two for the first time. But did the quest for bigger audiences cause Channel 4 to lose its way and drift from its remit? In seeking an answer to that question, many critics have pointed to Channel 4's voyage across the Atlantic. It has always plundered the best of American shows, which have become mainstay of the schedule. But have these imports taken away money which should have been spent on British productions? Although factual programmes have remained in peak time, many series addressing minority interests have been moved or even dropped, such as Africa Express and the gay and lesbian series, Out. It took Channel 4 11 years to win a bigger share of the audience than BBC Two. The victory was short-lived. In the TV ratings for the two channels during the last week of April, BBC Two claimed 20 of the top 30 programmes. Channel 4 held only 10, and most of those were episodes of Countdown and Brookside, Although Channel 4 has dropped its distinctive multicolored 4 logo, it hasn't been able to shake off the quirky 2. There is no doubt that Michael Gray has left Channel 4 shipshape as a commercial venture. But how buoyant has he left the programming? 